very good morning to everyone on this Pentecost Sunday. Let's um, open up this morning in prayer. Lord, we want to say thank you for another opportunity to gather together as your people. And we ask that you would have your way this morning in every home, that Holy Spirit, you would come and just have your way today. For we pray in Jesus' name. Well, good morning, family. Good morning, everyone. Hope you guys are well and had a great week. Uh, we are really excited to worship with you this morning. Um, in case you're wondering, uh, Sal made me wear this chop on top. Well, <laughs> and you. if you was wondering, yep, well, she's also in a <laughs> chop on top because he thought it would be funny. Well, actually, it's the, it, proved, it would have been the last day of the football season, but we'll celebrate nonetheless. But let's celebrate Jesus more importantly. So let's just pray. Father, we just bless your name. We thank you that we could all come together and worship you, Father. Uh, we just pray that you will be lifted high this morning. We pray, Father, that you would soften our hearts, Lord God, ready our hearts to give you our offering, Lord God, that you would ready our hearts to receive from you, that you would ready our hearts to... Uh, be challenged and changed in the midst of worship, Father. We just pray that you'll be glorified, that you'll be lifted up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And this morning, church, let's just come before God with expectant hearts. You know, ready to worship, but also ready to receive what God has for us this morning. In Jesus' name. So we're going to sing a song called, Lord, You Are Good. He's good. Amen. Amen. Amen.
right now, but he also has the power to work it so well together that you are a better version of yourself at the end of it. God knows what he's doing, church. He knows what he's doing. We just have to trust him. Peace, bring it all to peace. The storm surrounding me.
Your love on earth.
this moment. And if you're watching this, if you want more and need more of God, why don't you just stretch out your hands to Him? Open up your hands to Him in a ready position. And God, we ask in your mighty name that you will pour out your Spirit on us, your blessing, your love upon us like never before, God. That you would give us new hearts, Lord God. We want to go to new levels with you this morning, Lord Jesus. So in this moment, God, we ask that you would pour it out. Pour out your spirit upon us, Lord God. Change us from the inside out, Lord God. Change us from the inside out, Lord God. We pour it. Pour it out on us, Lord God. We are ready to receive, Lord God. We are ready to move forward, Lord God. We are ready to change. Pour it out, Lord God. Pour it out, we pray. Pour it out, we ask. Us of our sin, oh God. Pour it out on us, we pray. Pour it out on us, we Hi church, uh, I'm sure many of you have heard the song called The Blessing, which has been uh, an anthem for our church family, not only in the UK, but around the world. Um, so we just want to play this video. We hope that it blesses your heart um, and it's a song to sing over yourselves as well as your family um, and your friends um, and our global church. So God bless you. Enjoy the video and yeah, we'll see you soon.
Sing, come feel the soul for pain. Daily while he sits on the throne, see most high. Good fit so we stay winning sin. All around us, but in good we trust. Holds us in the palm of his hand. He fills and covers us, that's just his love. No, there is no one above. No, we can't be overcome whenever we are feeling lost. He said about tools already won. I am not alone, I feel his blessings. I stay faithful and stop distressing. He's always there when I call Jesus Christ as Lord. Good morning again to everyone. Hope you're all keeping safe and looking forward to coming out of lockdown. God has been good and has kept us and we have uh, everything to thank Him for. Well, today is Pentecost Sunday when we remember the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the church. And... Uh, you know, Jesus had told his disciples to remain in Jerusalem until they had received the Holy Spirit. In fact, he actually commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. As you know, the disciples have been given the commission, the mandate to go into all the world and preach the gospel. That same mandate that we have been given as believers. But they were to wait for the Holy Spirit. And so those early believers, those disciples waited. They stayed together and continued in prayer, waiting for that promise. And the day of Pentecost came. And the Bible says, suddenly there came a sound from heaven like a mighty rushing wind, and the disciples were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues and in other languages. And a crowd gathered around those disciples, mostly Jews in Jerusalem, because they had heard the commotion and the noise. Little did they know that they were witnessing the birth of the church. They didn't understand what was going on. And so Peter stood up to explain what was happening. This was what God had promised when he spoke through his prophet Joel. 
And God had said, it shall come to pass in the last days that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. The young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And then Peter reminds them about Jesus, how he was crucified and put to death according to God's predetermined purpose and plan. And how God raised him up and exalted him to the right hand of God. And this same Jesus received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and has poured out his Spirit upon his church. And then we see in Acts chapter 2, from verse 38 to 39, where Peter addresses the crowd and urges them to repent. Acts chapter 2, 38 to 39. And Peter says, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises to you and your children, and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. And many in that crowd received the word, and the Bible records that about 3,000 people were added to the church that day. The church had been born. Pentecost had happened. Jesus, the head of the church, had received the Holy Spirit and had poured him out upon the church. From this point on, we see the Holy Spirit actively involved in the church. We see him directing the church. We see him filling and anointing the believers. Just as he anointed Jesus while he was on earth. And these believers went out just as Jesus did, preaching the good news of the kingdom, healing the sick, casting out demons, and God worked with them, confirming his word with signs and wonders. And we know that the good news spread in Jerusalem, and the church grew and multiplied. And as we know, there was a great persecution against the church, and the disciples were all scattered. Yet the Holy Spirit continued to work, and his disciples went everywhere preaching the word. The Holy Spirit was with those disciples. He was with them in their leadership meetings. The Holy Spirit was present at the council of elders as they made decisions. He was in their prayer meetings. In the church of Antioch, as the believers came together to pray, the Holy Spirit spoke to them and gave them clear directions. And we see this again in Acts chapter 13 and verse 2. And it says this, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, these were the believers in the church at Antioch, the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. And then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. And so we know that on that first missionary journey by Paul and his team, many churches were planted and many were saved and brought into the kingdom of God as the Holy Spirit led and directed them. And so we see the Holy Spirit at work in the church, at work in the early church, and the Holy Spirit is still at work today. We think about the many revivals in church history, the Korean revival, the Azusa Street revival, the Welsh revival to name but a few. We also had the charismatic renewal in the late 60s and the 70s, where the Holy Spirit moved in the traditional churches, in denominations like the Catholics, the Anglicans, and the Baptists. 
men and women were filled with the Holy Spirit. And this church, King's Church, was in fact birthed out of that charismatic renewal. Men like Barry and others filled with the Holy Spirit started a home group and that grew into a fellowship and has become the church as we know it today. And many churches were birthed during that charisma, charismatic renewal. And today we remember the massive crusades that were led by Reinhard Bonke in Africa and how many millions heard the gospel and many were brought into the kingdom of God as the Holy Spirit moved in power, healing the sick and confirming his word with signs and wonders. And those crusades are still happening today. God continues to work by his Holy Spirit. He's at work in our nation. He's still at work in Medway. He's at work in our churches. And you know, as we continue to face the challenges of this horrible pandemic, and as we begin to come out of lockdown, as our children begin to return to school, what is God doing? That is the question. What is the Holy Spirit doing? And many have said that during this lockdown period, God has been preparing the church for an awakening, for a new move of the Spirit. Many have spoken about a harvest, a great harvest that is coming, and about the prodigals that are returning. Prophets have spoken about the shaking that is happening. And we can sense that something is happening. The Church of England recently said that unexpected high numbers of people are tuning into their online services and that 6,000 people found the prayer hotline in its first 48 hours of operation. 6,000 people. And so people are turning to God. People are searching for God. And we can all identify with that. We are praying more. We are reading our Bibles more. Families are spending more time together in prayer. And we are sensing that God is stirring us up and preparing us. As we come out of lockdown, there are still fears and anxieties. We have all been affected by this pandemic. We all know someone who has been taken by this horrible COVID-19. We know someone who has been, who has lost a loved one or a friend. Some have lost their jobs. Businesses are collapsing and there is so much uncertainty about the future. But we must continue to trust in Him. He is our refuge and fortress. In all of this, let us remember that God is still at work, that the Holy Spirit is still at work, and that He has called us to be a light and to bring hope and comfort, healing, and to bring the good news of Jesus to those around us. That is the mandate of the church. That is the commission we all have. The mission Jesus gave us to go into the world and preach the good news. And that was why the Holy Spirit came. That was why Jesus poured out the Holy Spirit. We know that the Holy Spirit is also constantly working in the hearts of the men and women around us who do not yet know Him. And is urging them to repent, urging them to turn to God because one day, the world as we know it will come to an end. And there will be a judgment. God will bring evil to an end. And there will be a judgment. And so God is calling out to every man to repent. 
Because, you see, he's not willing that anyone should perish. And the Holy Spirit is working in people's lives, bringing conviction of sin and of judgment and righteousness. That work is carrying on across the world, around us. And God is calling us to be part of what He is doing. We are co-workers with God. And you know, I find that humbly that God would call us to work with Him, to partner with Him. 2 Corinthians 6 1 says we are God's partners. God has called us to work with Him. In 2 Corinthians 6 18 to 20, the New King James Version, 2 Corinthians 6 18 to 20, it says this Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to Himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Okay. Uh, let me read um, that again here. Two Corinthians six, eighteen to twenty, the New King James Version says this: Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to Himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to Himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. So God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. We are ambassadors for Christ. We are ministers of the new covenant. Every believer is a minister. Every one of us a minister. And if you are listening and you are a believer, God is reminding you that you are a minister. You know, when we think of ministers, we think of the man or the woman behind the pulpit. And usually we think of the hierarchy in the church. And we think of a priest or a bishop and then the rest of us. But you know, that is not the New Testament model of the church. We are all priests. We are all ministers. In First Peter, chapter 2 and verse 9, it says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So we are all priests, everyone a minister. We all have different functions, we have different giftings, we come from different backgrounds and have different experiences. But God wants to use all that for his glory as we work together. So everyone, a minister, I am an engineer, and when I get into my van every day, I am reminding myself that I am a minister, that I am an ambassador of the kingdom. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. And so I remind myself, and I'm asking God, I'm asking the Holy Spirit, Lord, who do you want me to encourage today? Lord, who can I come alongside to help? 
Is there anyone that needs to be comforted? Is there anyone broken hearted? Is there someone that I need to pray for? And as I meet that customer, and as I work with my colleagues, I'm looking for that opportunity to bring an encouraging word or to pray for that person. And you know, if we're going to be effective ministers, we are going to need to depend completely on the Holy Spirit. We're going to need to depend on His leading because He is already at work in the lives of men and women that we meet. He is already at work in the lives of the men and women in our workplaces. He is already at work in the lives of our neighbors, our friends, and He calls us to work alongside Him. And we see this clearly with Philip and the Ethiopian official. The Holy Spirit tells Philip to come alongside the chariot of this Ethiopian official. And as Philip does that, as he draws close to the chariot, he hears the official reading the scriptures. And he immediately sees what the Holy Spirit is doing. You see, the Holy Spirit had already started a work in that Ethiopian official. And all that Philip had to do was to explain the scriptures to him, is to come alongside the Ethiopian official. And then he goes on to tell him about Jesus. In Acts 8.35 it says, Philip opened his mouth and the king at this scripture preached Jesus to him. And we know the Ethiopian official was then saved and baptized and history suggests this official went back and started the first church in Ethiopia. All because Philip had learned to depend on the Holy Spirit. All because he had learned to listen to the Holy Spirit. We are all ministers anointed by the Holy Spirit, just as Jesus was. And so whatever you do, and wherever God has placed you, let us remember that He has called us to be ministers. If you are a teacher, you are a house husband or housewife, God has called you to be a minister. If you are a businessman or woman, a lawyer, or you work in a hospital, office, or work in the local government, or you are a student at college, or you're going to university. Whatever you do, God has anointed you. We live in the world, and we have careers, we are raising families, we have dreams, but let's remember we belong to the kingdom of God, and that we are ambassadors with a message of hope to those around us. We are his ministers. In Acts 1 and verse 8, which many of us know, which we all know, Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, it says this, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. This is why the Holy Spirit came. We have received the Holy Spirit as believers so we can be witnesses for Him in our Jerusalem. And that's Chatham or wherever you live. It's in our neighborhood. But it's also in our personal world, our friends, our family, colleagues at work, and our neighbors. And when you think about it, for some people in our personal world, we are the only Christians they know. And those people need to hear about Jesus. And maybe God is reminding us, as we think about Pentecost, as we think about the fact that we are ministers, as we think about the fact that God has given us a commission to reach out to those around us, maybe God is reminding us 
of some of those people and that we need to reach out to them again. We are also to take the good news into our community and to the nations. And as a church, we can do that together. We send out mission teams going out to different nations. We have caring hands, our community outreach. We have live groups, many of them reaching out to their neighborhoods. We have the high street evangelism. We have the prison ministry, which has just started up, and we are waiting for our first opportunity to go into a prison. We have John Gaines and his vision for the media, and many others are rising up, some with ideas from the evangelism workshop we had yesterday with Christian Life and the M16 Revival Team. I want to thank them again for working with us. So we are excited at what lies ahead. The Holy Spirit has come. He is with us as we work together. Everyone in minister, taking the good news of Jesus into our community and to the nations. We're going to bring this service to an end this morning. But we just want to pray. If you have never made a decision to follow Jesus, and you want to do that today, we want to pray together. If you have realized that you have gone your own way, you realize that you have turned away from God and that you have sinned, and you're saying, God, I want you to forgive me. If you have wandered away from God and you're saying, I want to come back, you've been a Christian before, but you've wandered away and you're saying, Lord, I realize I need to come back. We want to pray together. I'm just going to ask you to repeat this prayer after me, wherever you may be, in your living room, in your bedroom. Lord, I come to you today. I ask that you forgive me for all that I have done wrong. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died for me. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for bringing me into your family. So if you pray that prayer, welcome to God's family. And there will be a message for you at the end of this service. I just want to also pray one more prayer. If you have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit, we want to pray with you. Every believer needs the Holy Spirit. Every believer needs His power. Every believer needs the help of the Holy Spirit. That was why Jesus said to those early disciples, wait in Jerusalem until you receive the Holy Spirit. And so if you have not yet been baptized in the Holy Spirit, if you have not yet been filled with the Holy Spirit, you can ask God to fill you today. And we're going to pray with you wherever you are, in your, in your living room, in your bedroom, in your kitchen, wherever you are. All you need to do is say, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. God, I ask for your Holy Spirit. And if there are people around you, then you can get them to pray with you, to lay hands on you. And all you need to say is, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. We also want to pray for anyone who needs healing today. And so let's come as we pray. Lord, we ask that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit. We ask for a baptism of your Holy Spirit. 
Lord, we ask that God, you would fill us. Thank you, Lord, for that baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for healing, Lord. For those who are sick, Lord, we ask that you would touch them. Lord, we rebuke every fever. We rebuke every sickness in your name. Lord, we ask, oh God, that you would bring healing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for filling us with your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. We say thank you for your presence, for we pray in Jesus' name. So we want to thank you for joining us this morning. Let's continue to pray for one another as we come out of lockdown and as we step out together as ministers of God. Don't forget going deeper on Wednesday. Have a great week and stay blessed. We are going to go as we finish the service into a time of worship. God bless you. Have a great week. Well, God bless you, church. Have a great week. Have a great week, everyone. I hope that you have the best week. Um, yeah, we'll seek after God's presence this week. Amen. Aria says amen. Me? Amen. Ready? Do you want to go to Mama so Daddy can pray? How about you go on the floor? No? Or you dance easy? I want to go with Mama. Okay. We're going to go with, oh, we're going to go with a song called Build Your Kingdom Here. So they say, come set your rule and reign.
so much. Love you so much. Cannot wait to see you. Say love you. Say bye bye. And blow kissy. And wavy. And say go. Yeah, that's my girl. We hope that you enjoyed today's service. As we bring it to a close, it may be that you responded and made a commitment to live your life for God. If that's you, or if you've just got more questions before you feel you can take that step, please get in touch with us at firststeps at kingschatham.org. We'd love to get in touch with you and answer any questions you've got to help you on the next step in your journey. Thank you.